Hey y'all, and welcome to another episode of Flick Connection. And in this episode, we're gonna do something a little bit different and talk about a bunch of the best new release movies I've watched recently. So longtime subscribers know I'm a movie addict. I watch a ton of stuff and a lot of offbeat stuff. Uh, in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the big new releases that I've seen and enjoyed, as well as a lot of the smaller movies I've recently watched and enjoyed. Thanks to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video, but we'll talk more about them in a little bit. Right now, I wanna talk about a couple of Nicolas Cage movies, starting with Sympathy for the Devil. Now, this is one I was not totally hot on, but big fans of Nicolas Cage should get a kick out of it, mainly because he's really doing 90s Nicolas Cage. He's a little unhinged. It feels like classic Nicolas Cage to me. Joel Kinnaman's pretty good in this. The plot's a little bit slow, but there's some flair to the camera work, and I did enjoy the movie as a big fan of Nicolas Cage, but I did not feel like there was enough there for people who don't just love him already. That's not the case with Dream Scenario, though. Have you been dreaming about me? Have I been dreaming about you? Yeah. This is one I think a lot of people could get into. It is a little slow paced and it's definitely weird. If you don't like weird movies, this one might not be for you, but Nicolas Cage is doing something different in this movie. Nothing groundbreaking, but he does a great job playing this character of a man who kind of accidentally becomes famous very quickly. Now the plot here is that he plays kind of a nobody of a college professor, but he starts appearing in a lot of people's dreams all over the world. So the movie's got a little bit of a Charlie Kaufman touch to it. And Nicolas Cage is very funny. The supporting cast is funny. The movie actually does deal with some heavy themes, mostly revolving around fame. Specifically, the type of fame that is more common today where nobodies become very famous very quickly, whether it's for good reasons or bad. All the dream stuff was interesting, and like I said, everyone's funny, but I've not seen a movie look at this subject matter the way Dream Scenario did, and I thought it was very interesting. This one is actually currently available on HBO Max, or at least it is here in the US. Now, what I always do, and what I've done in this video, is I've listed all the titles we're discussing down in the top pinned comment. Also down there, I've listed where you can stream these movies currently, here in the US, as well as Canada, the UK, and Australia. So if you use a VPN or anything like that, you've got a lot to work with down, again, in that top pinned comment. I also recently watched Napoleon, and as a big fan of Ridley Scott, uh, I think I'm in league with most people in that this is not one of his best. And honestly, Ridley Scott is hit or miss. I mean, he's made some of the greatest movies of all time, but he's also made a handful of turds, and Napoleon sits somewhere in the middle. I did enjoy a lot of the scenes in Napoleon, but as a whole, I felt like it focused on a lot of the wrong things, and ultimately just was not a great Ridley Scott historical drama. I also recently watched Bo is Afraid, starring Joaquin Phoenix, a movie that was much more thought provoking than Napoleon, but listen closely because this movie is only for a small percentage of people. I am so sorry for what your daddy passed down to you. It's dark, it's disturbing, it's one of the strangest movies I've ever seen, and longtime subscribers know I love me some strange movies. And don't misunderstand me, I'm not recommending Bo is Afraid. If you like the way I'm talking about it, then the movie might be for you. If not, I'm telling you, it is the weirdest thing I've seen in a long time. And this is directed by Ari Aster, who did Hereditary and Midsommar, yet this is not a horror movie, and almost doesn't really feel like his other movies. I'll tell you one thing, I'll never be able to look at Parker Posey the same way again. But there is something there. The movie is making a point, and I thought about it afterwards for quite a bit. I even watched a few YouTube videos trying to help figure out some of the heavier themes in this movie. And I should say, not only is it weird, but it's also very off-putting is the best word I can use. It's not stomach turning. It's not disturbing, I mean it is disturbing a little bit, but it's almost repulsive at times, very much on purpose, and again, just one of the weirder movie watching experiences I've had all year. Longtime subscribers probably know I also gave up on the Oscars years ago. Uh, not because I'm some sort of snob, but I watch almost everything, and 
I don't really value the opinions of the Academy that much, especially when they really only pick from a small group of movies. Movies that I do agree are quite good, like I liked Oppenheimer, I thought it was a good movie, not sure it's one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Certainly not one of Christopher Nolan's best. But a movie released in late 2023 that I think deserved to be in league with all the Oscar nominations was The Beasts. This comes from Spain. It is mixed language. There's French and Spanish in it. But this actually revolves around a middle-aged, well-to-do couple that start an organic farm out in this valley in Spain. And they are despised by their neighbors who have lived there forever. The movie actually exposes a lot of reasons as to why. And there are some powder keg moments in this that are just dialogue heavy and it's all in Spanish. I had to read subtitles, but the performances and the writing is so top notch. I thought this was just an excellent flick. It is very slow paced, but it's one of the better just straightforward dramas I've seen in the past few months. But before we get to my Roadhouse review and a bunch of other stuff, I do want to tell you about today's sponsor, Magic Spoon, which is a delicious high protein treat that tastes just like cereals you remember from when you were a kid. And every bowl of Magic Spoon has only four to five net grams of carbs, but 13 to 14 grams of protein, zero grams of sugar, and only 140 calories per bowl. Magic Spoon has become my late night snack of choice for the past two years. Magic Spoon is also keto friendly, grain free, soy free, and gluten free. It's been an excellent way of me packing in some extra grams of protein at the end of the day while also satisfying my sweet tooth. Magic Spoon comes in a bunch of different flavors and they also have treats, in fact, Ever since they sent this to me, I have been patiently waiting to open and taste these blueberry muffin treats. Ooh, that looks good. Tastes like blueberry muffin to me. And right now, as one of my viewers, you can save $5 on your first order with Magic Spoon when you use my link down in the description or just type in magicspoon.com slash flick. My mouth is literally still watering from the blueberry muffin thing. These treats are delicious. The cereal is fantastic. It helps you pack in protein while also kind of reminding you of that cereal from when you were a kid. It's great stuff. Again, to get that discount, go visit my link in the description. You're gonna save $5. I recommend a variety pack. It's a great deal, but speaking of great stuff, let's talk about the rest of the movies on this list. Thanks for coming out tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So horny to be here. Prime Video just recently added Ricky Stanicki. This is not a strong recommendation for me. In fact, I kind of think the title and the concept of the title is funnier than anything in the movie, but this was a silly, somewhat raunchy comedy with John Cena, Zac Efron, and Andrew Santino. I thought they were all really funny. Had I paid money to go to a theater to see this, I think I would have been sorely disappointed. But as a Prime Video original comedy starring in those guys that they dropped on a random Wednesday, I was pleasantly surprised with Ricky Stenicki. And just this week, Prime Video released the new Roadhouse reboot. If you saw my preview of everything coming to Prime Video this month, you know I was kind of hyped for this movie. Even though I know remakes like this are rarely good, but there was a solid director attached to this one. Jake Gyllenhaal rarely picks a dud. Conor McGregor is excellent in this movie, but they gave him some great lines and he was just a true maniac. I mean, don't look for a lot of nuance in his performance, but then again, nuance is not really McGregor's thing. The new Roadhouse kind of threads the needle in a beautiful way. It feels a lot like the original in all the ways that you would want, and then feels updated and fresh. The fights are much more intense and brutal. They enhance them with CGI, which you can tell a little bit, but it does make for a more immersive brawling experience. In fact, the fights in this movie are pretty bone breaking. Is that one in front of yours? No, I just broke his arm. It's funny when it should be funny. It's over the top at times, but again, in a very appropriate way. I would say if you're a fan of the original, there's a lot to love with this remake. But even if you've never seen the Patrick Swayze version, uh, I still recommend this. I know MMA fans will get into this and not just because of Conor McGregor. I'm telling you, if you like the new one and you've never seen the original, it too is available on Prime Video right now. Moving on to some Netflix releases. Uh, I understand why people didn't like the 
Adam Sandler movie Spaceman. Um, it's not for everybody. I even said back before it came out that this was going to have a little more in common with the Sam Rockwell movie Moon. And I was kind of right. It ends up dealing a little more with like emotional trauma and things. And Adam Sandler, I think, did a great job. The set that they built, some of the effects, I think were all really cool, especially for this type of movie. I also thought it was really well directed. Conceptually though, this started off on a foot I think most people were gonna have trouble connecting with. But the fact that it is kind of about emotional trauma and how it affects relationships and things, I do know that there's a small group of people who would absolutely love this movie whether they like Adam Sandler or not. But believe it or not, I actually thought the new movie with Millie Bobby Brown was pretty excellent. It's titled Damsel. She's actually given as a sacrifice to this dragon. And the movie reminded me a little bit of a 1980s movie that I love titled The Dragon Slayer. Now that movie has a lot of practical effects and it's just kind of on a different level. It's really cool. But as a Netflix original movie, Damsel's pretty excellent. Nothing really hit, hit me over the head or surprised me, but this is a movie geared towards a younger audience, people that haven't already seen everything like I have. With that perspective though, I can only imagine like teenage girls were just in heaven the night that this movie came out. Speaking of kids though, I have seen a few really great family movies lately with my family. I'll be quick on these and then move on to some of the more brutal movies I've watched recently. But I thought DreamWorks' new movie, Migration, was a beautiful movie. I mean, just the, the look of it is stunning. You follow this family of ducks, Danny DeVito is in the mix. Nothing groundbreaking, but I think I enjoyed this one a lot more than I've enjoyed most Pixar movies lately. But then Netflix also just released one titled Orion in the Dark. It's about a young boy who's afraid of everything and the dark is kind of personified and comes to life and teaches him how to not be afraid of things. The Dark is actually voiced by Paul Walter Hauser, one of the greatest actors working today. It's a nice wholesome watch with the family. If anything, it reminded me a little bit of Pixar's Inside Out. Now back to some movies for grown-ups. I recently watched Red Right Hand starring Orlando Bloom and Andy McDowell in one of her most vicious roles, maybe the only really vicious role she's ever done. She is a wild woman in this movie. But this is kind of a straightforward thriller. It takes place in the backwoods. You're dealing with gangsters and stuff. If you like that genre, then this is a pretty cool flick. It's actually from the same guys that did Fat Man with Mel Gibson and Small Town Crime with John Hawks. Two movies I've recommended here in the past. And for me, Red Right Hand fits somewhere in between those two. I'm really partial to Small Town Crime. And for some reason, I didn't enjoy Red Right Hand as much. But still, if you like those types of movies, Red Right Hand is a pretty good recent release. I also watched Saltburn. It's been several months now, but it took me a while to get around to watching this one. And I gotta say, I did like it. Um, I didn't appreciate some of the edgier stuff, and even though I'm someone who likes edgy movies, it felt a little try-hard in Saltburn for some reason. It didn't really come as naturally for this movie. So there were several moments that felt a little bit forced and kind of lost me as a result. However, I thought a few of the performances were just top notch. The movie's got a really cool look to it. They had a great cinematographer. The soundtrack is banging on this thing. And it does have quite a few surprises. It is a cool movie. I think it was maybe just a little bit overhyped when it was released, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And then another small one that is included with Prime Video right now is titled The Passenger. This revolves around a very emotionally unstable young man who works at a fast food restaurant when one day one of his co-workers hauls loose and kills everyone else in the restaurant. Now the movie is very disturbing. It is not a lighthearted look at a mass shooting, but Kyle Gallner actually plays the shooter. He's not the lead character here, but his performance is amazing. It's subtle in a bunch of little ways that are not only good, but entertaining to watch. Like I said, this is a small movie with kind of a small concept, but man, does it pack a punch, and there are multiple sequences in this that had me on the edge of my seat. Fair warning though, this one does have some brutal moments in it. And then one of my favorite movies I've recently watched is American Fiction. Now, I sat on this one for a while. I didn't get a chance to see it in a the theater and then ultimately just didn't feel like paying $20 to see it when I knew it was gonna be hitting streaming services soon. Are those human remains? You guys have a permit for that? Just shut the f up, Philip. Cliff, you don't talk to me like that. You want me to beat your ass? I'm just out of here, Philip. I will eat your sweater vest for dinner. 
Now this is currently included with MGM Plus, which I pay for, I know most of you don't. You can rent it for a reasonable price, but it'll be several months before you see it available anywhere else. Starting off, I'm a big fan of Jeffrey Wright. I was long before he was in Westworld, so I'm excited to see him as the lead in a movie like this that a lot of people are hyped for. But the basic setup here is that he's a writer and publishers are just not interested in his work at the time because they're all interested in more socially conscious things. And as a total goof, he writes a short story in the voice of a very stereotypical black man from an impoverished, crime-ridden background. To his surprise, publishers are all over it, and the hijinks kind of take off from there. Now, what surprised me about American fiction is that that setup is what you get in the trailers, and it looks absolutely hilarious, and it is in the movie, yet it's only like 25% of the movie. The rest of it deals with fairly interesting family dynamics and relationship dynamics that, again, I wasn't expecting from this movie. They feel a little bit ordinary, but the movie handled them all in this beautiful way. I was very interested in all the different characters and how they related to each other. And again, I came here to watch the other funny thing and it's there, but the movie itself was just solid stuff. I loved it. And it attacks middle-aged liberal white women in a way I've never seen in a mainstream movie. It honestly shocked me that it went that hard. And it works because a lot of it is really true. Michael B. Jordan is circling. We want to put him on the cover in one of those um, uh, scarves, I guess you would call them, tied around his head. A do-rag? Do-rag, that's it. Do rag in a tank top with the muscles showing. Oh, something called the fire department. <laughs> and then I'll wrap this video up with my review of Dune Part 2. And I'll be pretty brief here because I don't think I have a lot to say about this movie that hasn't already been said. I loved the original. And not just because it's a top-notch production, which it is. I mean, you've got top-tier talent at every tier of this production. And to me, it's just the second half of one movie. And it does feel very cohesive in that way. I was actually pleasantly surprised by that, I guess. Visually, there's really no comparison. And then in terms of big budget sci-fi movies like this, so many of them cater to a younger audience and it's very nice to have something that doesn't talk down to the audience like we're children. I get that that's appropriate for superhero movies, but it's, again, very nice to have something as refined as Dune. I honestly wish we got more things at this level that are this thought-provoking and clever, but also these big spectacles. They tend to be kind of one or the other, and Dune just does both beautifully. I highly recommend seeing it in IMAX if you still have a chance to catch it in your area. You just won't be able to create the same experience at home no matter how hard you try, and there are very few movies that deserve an IMAX screening as much as Dune. Let me know in the comments what you've enjoyed watching lately. Maybe I've missed something and you'll see it on a list in the future. Don't forget to go check out that Magic Spoon link to get the discount, but I'll keep making these videos as long as y'all keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special new release episode and you will see me on the next one.